Aloha, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Mac Lessons Radio. And this is King Flex, also known as Tariq Nasheed. Playing a little tiny bubbles in the background. That's that Hawaiian vibe because we're still broadcasting live here in Hawaii, in Waikiki, to be more specific. And this is actually our last day here. And I had a ball this week. I hope you've seen some of the pictures on MySpace. I've been posting pictures of my Hawaii trip on MySpace to give everybody a vibe. For those who haven't been here, you got to come to Hawaii. Hawaii's the, the bomb place, man. Very cool place. Um, this is Interracial Macking Week still. This is the last day of Interracial Macking Week. All week we've been discussing how to step to different women of different races. We started off with white women, then we broke it down with the Latina girls, then we broke it down with the Asian young ladies, and now we're going to take it home. We're going to close the deal with how to step to black women. And normally, throughout the week, you've noticed that I've had theme music for different days for different types of women. Like, the first day we had songs that white girls would like then we had all latina songs that the latina girls would like then we had the asian vibe going on yesterday and today we're going to just play all songs from black women so we're going to keep that theme going on we're going to play all black women we got a little floetry in the background black women love floetry what's another song that black women like black women like that song Living My Life Like It's Golden. That's like a theme for black girls. Y'all love that song by Jill Scott. Living Your Life Like You Go. And y'all motherfuckers like Bossy. They like that shit. They like that song Bossy. It's not a coincidence why they like that song. We'll get on that in a minute. Anyway. Don't forget the website. Kingflex.org. If you have any questions myspace.com slash Tariq underscore Nasheed so today we're talking about how to get on black women very touchy subject this whole interracial macking week has been a touchy thing a lot of folks are talking about it there's a big buzz about it I've been hearing about the radio show being posted on different websites on the net because we, we're dialoguing. I want to dialogue with you guys about stuff that people are afraid to talk about. People are afraid to even get in the realm of race. And I get a lot of emails from guys wanting to know how to step to women of different races. And bam, we've been breaking it down all week. So step into black women. How do you do it? What are the pros and cons? Now with black women... There's a lot of different angles where you need to come at black women. There's a lot of different angles that you can use. And there's different types of black women. American black women and non-American black women. Those are the basic ones. Most other black women around the world, their vibe is kind of different. But American black women, something about them. I don't know everybody's waiting on me to say hey or nay, but I like American black women. I like black women in general. I prefer black women. But American black women, they've been kind of slipping lately. We're going to get on that in a second too. Now, if you are a white guy trying to step to a black female, You got to be very smooth and you definitely have to be in some sort of authority position. White guys like a particular type of black woman. See, when white guys go black, they go real black. White guys like slim, dark skinned women, generally. 
unfortunately, slim, dark-skinned black women are very far in between. But whenever you see a slim, dark-skinned black woman, white guys will get at her. The non-ghetto ones. I'm not talking about the hood rats, the, the ghetto broads, like the Gabrielle Union types. White boys love them. Now, usually, females like that they have themselves together. If you get you a slim chocolate sister who's very well educated, has a good head on her shoulders, you just talk sense to her. She respects real conversation. And she'll feel your vibe. And actually, for white guys, it's a little easier to earn respect from a black female. See, there, like I said before in my other shows, there's like a civil war in the black community between black men and black women. Because a brother step into a sister, it's a whole different thing. There's a whole different dynamic that comes into play. The black community is a matriarchal society. The black community for years has been dominated and run by the women and that has caused many problems within the black community one of the major problems between black men and black women is a major lack of respect that black women as a collective have for black men people always like to talk about how black men don't respect the sisters the thing is there are black women that the average black man respects. He respects his mother at least. He respects his grandmother at least. He respects his sister at least. He at least respects the women in his family. So the capacity to respect a black woman is there. On the other hand, black women generally don't have black men in their lives or their families that they respect at all. So when it comes to dating somebody, they really don't have that capacity to respect a black man. There was a book called When Chicken Heads Come to Roost. I forgot the name of the, the, the author. It was a black female author. And there was some type of survey done in the book, and they asked a number of black women, are there any black men in your lives that you respect? And the general answer was they had many black men that they loved, but they didn't really respect them. And that's how a lot of black women feel about black men. It's love there, but not too much respect. And there's a reason for that. People like to dance around the issue and talk about semantics, but there's a reason why there's this civil war between black men and black women. And brothers don't really know how to deal with black women. So brothers choose other races. This is why we did interracial Mackin week, because brothers... Are stepping to me like, hey, how can I improve my relations with other women, with other women of other races? See, there is a collective lack of respect in the black female community for black men. And this has been going on for a long time. And the reason why is because of slavery. It was a purpose purposeful dynamic set into motion centuries ago there was a document that's been floating around in black intellectual circles called the Willie Lynch letter it's been in black intellectual circles for decades people they've been knowing about it it's called the Willie Lynch letter now Willie Lynch was a well-known slave owner back in like the 1700s or the early 1800s. I'm kind of paraphrasing, but you'll get the gist of what I'm saying. Now, Willie Lynch came up with these techniques on how to make better slaves. And Willie Lynch had a meeting and he would tell other slave owners, you know, how to create rifts within the black community, how to create rifts between light-skinned blacks and dark-skinned blacks and field slaves and black slaves so forth and so on and this is well known within the black scholar community one thing that a lot of these scholars team seem to ignore 
there's a part in the Willie Lynch letter where he talks about how to break down the American black woman. There's a whole part in there that everybody purposely ignores because it's so, it's a dominant part of this letter. It's such a prominent part and it's such a strong part of this letter. You you would have to purposely ignore it. It's that powerful. And that is the root of the problem between black men and black women. In Willie Lynch's letter, he talked about breaking down black women by giving them or creating an independent mind frame. And the way to do that is to break down black men in front of her. If you have a black slave, a black male slave and a black female slave, he would tell the other slave masters to purposely break him and, and beat him and, and just wear him down in front of the black woman which will create an unnatural independent mind state for her knowing that she would have to make it on her own which was unnatural and the word they use was independent this these are the actual words that the letter is using and I want everybody to google this when you finish listening to this broadcast giving black women an unnatural independent mind state and if you notice today black women are the only women who talk about I'm independent to this day white women never say that I've never heard a white woman white woman run around saying I'm independent I've never heard a Latina woman I'm independent it's a black female phenomenon it's unnatural. It's unnatural for a woman to be quote unquote independent because you're really not independent. You dig? So that dynamic, seeing black men broken down like that and black men being put into a submissive position, that created a major lack of respect that black women have to black men because that leadership wasn't there. Women of all races respect leadership and black men were purposely not let in a position of leadership and like the hustlers say there's always been two free people in this country two free races that's black women and white men that's why I said early in this broadcast that a white guy would really have no problem stepping to a sister because the respect factor is there if you look at our society, the American country, our society, black men, black women rather, and white men are pretty much free to do whatever they want to do. It was white women who were more oppressed and black men who were oppressed. A lot of people might say, oh my God, how so? Now, if any white women are listening, white women know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. white women were really oppressed in this country major that's why they created the feminist movement for years for years and years and years white men didn't let white women out the house they didn't want white women going out the house white women couldn't work white women couldn't vote white women couldn't do shit they're trying to keep them away from brothers they were doing everything in their power to keep those two separated black men and white women you dig they did it under the guise of protecting white womanhood and these are real laws I don't want people to think that I'm you know spewing venom or any kind of propaganda these you know, these were laws you know up until 1967 there were laws in this country that a black man could not marry a white woman up until 1967 now a white man can marry a black bitch all day but they specifically said you couldn't marry black men and white women they were oppressed that's why the feminist movement came into play and the male black male civil rights movement came into play at the same time basically But black women have been allowed to do whatever they wanted to do in this country. Black women have had major freedoms. And if you look at our country today, the two most powerful people are black women and white men. 
the first female millionaire in this country self-made millionaire was a black woman out of all the females the first woman who was allowed to make a million dollars to become a millionaire was a black woman not a white woman white women had to get their money through marriage they weren't about to let a white woman get that kind of money because they don't want white women to have that kind of freedom they didn't want white women to have that kind of freedom they were really oppressing white women to this day you can kind of see it white women who are very powerful they kind of destroy them white women who are powerful they destroy the hell out of them remember there was a woman called Leone, Leona Helmsley she was like this rich hotel heiress they threw her ass in jail for taxes they didn't like that like Martha Stewart Martha Stewart is a baller Martha Stewart has buku money man a lot of folks can't really grasp how much money Martha Stewart has they threw that bitch under the jail Martha Stewart you know what I'm saying <laughs> like I said the most powerful people in this country are white men and black women the most powerful people in radio a guy named Lowry Mays owns Clear Channel and Kathy Hughes Radio 1 black woman most powerful people in television there's a lot of powerful male whites in television Steven Spielberg Merv Griffin the most powerful woman in television is Oprah Winfrey black woman you feel me the most powerful person in politics is George Bush and who's the most powerful woman? Condoleezza Rice. You feel where I'm going with this? So there's respect for white men coming from black women, but as far as black men, that respect isn't there. So black men have to keep this into consideration because subconsciously black men know about this disrespect they have to deal with it on a daily basis so a lot of brothers choose not to deal with it that's why we have to dialogue about stuff like this now that you understand the root of all these problems you have a better understanding on how to step to sisters brothers and I'm talking to the brothers here when you step to sisters brothers make sure that you step to a black woman who has a two family home make sure you had a black woman or you step to a black woman who had a father figure growing up that's extremely 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 important you do not really want to get with a black female who was raised by a single mother to this day I, I really don't date I, I don't think I've ever dated a black woman who was raised by a single mother I probably went out and kicked it with them or whatever but I've never had a serious relationship with a uh, black woman who was raised by a single mother because single black mothers poison their daughters minds against black men and these girls see their mothers struggling different men coming in and out of their lives men abandoning their mothers and her mother tell her all this stuff about how black men ain't shit brothers ain't no good get what you can out of these niggas don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing I mean this is what black girls grow up listening to who are raised by single mothers so when they step to you as a black man you're the goddamn enemy it's all about getting over on you it's no respect dry snitching niggas are cool on that them motherfuckers want to get mad when he want to go date Maria or Connie Chung or some goddamn body. So if you're going to date a sister, man, make sure it's a sister who had some kind of male figure in her life that she learned how to respect. So that respect can carry on to you. If she never had a man in her life that she respected, 
guess what? It really ain't going to start with you. It's going to be a problem. And that's a lost cause, unfortunately. Unless she's a very disciplined woman to really just charge her past to the game, which is very hard to do. But if she's just that disciplined to say, okay, you know what? My past was fucked up. I'm a changed woman. That's cool. But, you know, that's some rare shit. Now, if you get with the sister, get with the sister who has her mind and body right. Now, there are positive attributes and there are negative attributes with getting with sisters. The positive attributes, sisters who have themselves together, physically and mentally, the, the baddest bitches on earth. A sister with her shit together is the baddest bitch on the planet. A sister who's in shape, her mind right, nothing is better. Black women like this are the most attractive women on earth, like the Holly Berries, the Janet Jacksons, the Jada Pinkett's, the Gabrielle Unions, beautiful women. Go for those types. Now, with that being said, some of those women are becoming, becoming more far in between. It's becoming more far in between to get those top-notch sisters like that because you got to go through a lot of bullshit to get there. Now, unfortunately, a, a downside in the black female community, big problem, weight. The goddamn weight issues. There's a lot of overweight sisters out here that brothers ain't really trying to fuck with like that unless he's just broke. Because this shit about black men liking thick women, cut that bullshit out. Stop telling that lie on brothers. I'm so sick of that lie. We're going to clear that lie, that stereotype up today. Black men don't like big women. Broke men like big women. Because when a brother gets him some money, he ain't dating no fat bitch. Isn't that the the thing that they accuse brothers of? The minute brothers get money, they want to go get a white broad or a skinny broad? Yes. He just wants to go get a dime. When a brother has money, he wants to go get him a goddamn dime. And that's a fact. That's a fact of life. Just like when a sister gets her shit together, if a sister go out there and lose weight and she gets fine all of a sudden, she's going to want to get her a ball up. She's not going to want to lay up with that same broke-ass nigga she was laying up with. That chubby chaser. She's going to go get her somebody with some paper who appreciates a fine bitch, who can pay for being with a fine bitch. And vice versa. When a man has enough money to go out there and travel and, and see different women and get options, he gonna, he's going to go for the best options he can get. You dig? So a lot of brothers who are not financially stable have to brainwash themselves into believing that this overweight nonsense is cool, that it's thick. It's not thick. This shit is fat. Stop trying to make cute terms for some bullshit. Because when you don't have money, you acquire a taste for bullshit. You feel me? Like when you're in college, you can't really afford filet mignon. You can't afford lobster and shrimp you're on a budget so top ramen noodle soup tastes hella good when you're in college you go to go to somebody's college dorm you'll see top ramen noodle soup all over the place and they eat that shit like it's a four course meal because they acquire a taste for it because psychologically and subconsciously they know they can't afford anything better so they make the best out of what they have and appreciate what they have more same thing with a fat bitch brothers you got that fat bitch because you couldn't get nobody else so you acquire a taste for that fat bitch and I know I'm being rough I'm being curt that's my favorite word I love saying being curt Kurt means bold. But you got that fat bitch sitting up there sweating, 
with tattoos and a belly ring smelling like bacon and grits and you have rose colored glasses looking at her ass you think you got a Gabrielle Union step your game up fellas don't accept that the reason why we have all these overweight women in the black community is because y'all niggas will accept that bullshit y'all are you not making these women step their standards up brothers standards have dropped so bad back in the day niggas just leave a bitch you know nobody had nothing brothers they just leave if the bitch let herself go they're like fuck you brothers would bounce but now niggas are just giving props to these out of shape bras and it's become an epidemic if you stop giving props to that they'll cut that bullshit out you gotta start getting your money up start getting your hustle up Cause it's not cute that thick bullshit it's not cute now, some people might be mad and there's a difference between thick and fat see thick back in the day like in the 80s and 90s thick was like who could I say was thick like Melissa Ford she would be considered thick just somebody with a nice ass there's a difference between a nice ass and a big ass somebody with a nice ass nice thighs that was thick now you got just big bitches with ass and belly spread all over the place looking like a goddamn unicorn in the face and they're like ooh she thick the hell out of here with that step it up brothers I blame the brothers. It's the brothers that's doing that. If you step it up, brothers, the sisters will step it up. And what incentive do they have to step it up when you niggas are brown nosing these out of shape bras? Putting them in King Magazine and Smooth Magazine. You dig what I'm saying? Make them step their shit up. Because I guarantee you, when you get some money, man, your your taste buds are going to upgrade a little bit. You're going to change your game up a little bit. And when you step to sisters, remember, you got to be bold. You got to be aggressive. You can't allow any kind of disrespect. You got to check disrespect at the door. You got to be very bold, very curt with your actions. Demand your respect. And if she's not giving you your respect, let her bounce. And if you insist on dating a sister, and if you can't find none in your neighborhood that's going to be on some respect shit, the world is very big, brother. There's a bigger world out there besides your little neighborhood. Date an African. That's what I do. I, I'm an international player. I date them all over the place. Some of the finest sisters on earth is in Africa. More specifically, Ethiopia. Ethiopia has some of the finest women on earth. All the brothers who are hip to the Ethiopian females, they know exactly what I'm talking about. It ain't like what you see on TV where a bitch sitting up in the, the field with flies and gravy and shit hanging out of her mouth. It's not like that. Them motherfuckers are fine as hell in Ethiopia. Don't let Sally Struthers them pull the wool over your eyes. Them bitches are bad in Ethiopia. The baddest on earth. So you make these women step their game up, man. That's the point. That's the moral of the story. Anyway, that's been it for today's lessons. I am Tariq King Flex Nasheed. This is our last day here in Waikiki, Hawaii. I'm coming home tomorrow. Um, I'll post some more pictures up on MySpace. Check out MySpace.com slash Tariq underscore Nasheed. Check out KingFlex.org. And I will talk to you cats tomorrow. Aloha. Mac Lessons Radio, baby.